the most delightfully fascinating character in the realms of mystery, Charlie Chan. In the matter of the murder of Ellen Landini at Pineview, Charlie Chan, the Honolulu detective, has found himself facing a difficult problem. Suspicion had been directed against all of the guests in turn, but especially against Dr. Swan. Now, with Swan's murder, suspicion of Ah Singh is very definite. Ah Singh has entered the study. Charlie Chan had asked him to look on the desk. Singh had been unable to hide his surprise at seeing a 45 lying there, and, breaking his unusual taciturn silence, admits that the gun was his. Before Charlie Chan can prevent him, Ah Singh picks up the revolver. His glance of scrutiny changes to a bland expression belying the cunning in his eyes, and he turns to Charlie Chan. Oh, no, me orders him a crazy boss. This is not my gun. No, Ah Singh. What make you think that? Oh, me no think it. Me sabe too much. This is all the same and not my gun. But you do have a gun, I think? No, no. I sing no got gun. Please, I sing. Explain your contradictory statement. Oh, a long time before, somebody he Blake, uh, you know, saw a tie a Blake in a uh, nisi house. Me think more better me get them gun. So me catch them gun, all right. But now no can tell where gun he stay stuck. You mean that someone stole your gun? Oh, maybe no steal. Can't the man come on this place summertime? Maybe somebody make a mistake. Take him, my gun. Oh, too bad, but no can help. Ah, uh, suppose you like eat dinner? More better you hurry. No, thank you, I think. This is more important. Oh, me, me sorry me make a mistake. But me think that gun long time ago gone away. Me think he come back, that's all. How I sincerely wish that I could believe you, I think. Oh, you don't believe you all I think, huh? Oh, too bad. No can help. Oh, here you are. We thought you were coming down to dinner. Sit down, Mr. Ho. You too, Sheriff. That would be all, I think. No, it, Mr. Chan. No, thank you, I think. Sheriff, I am going to try an experiment. Yes? Yeah? I am going to stage a little play, perhaps like Hamlet, who knows. It plays the thing wherein we'll catch the conscience of the king, otherwise our murderer. Oh, I'm all attention. With your honorable father's assistance, we shall place people in places they occupy at night Madame Landini was murdered. Your honorable father will fire the shot, and it goes without saying that he will listen to voices as I question. Fine idea, Mr. Chan. I'll do anything I can. We three, we shall share secrets. And that is... We three shall be only persons to know where shot is fired. Mr. Holt, I shall have Miss Beaton lead you to the study. She will undoubtedly lead you to the balcony. You think, despite your unfortunate blindness, that you could come to this spot before firing shot? Let me see now. The, uh, the balcony door should be about here. Yes, yes. This is it, isn't it? Right, Dad. And uh, I walk to here toward Mr. Chan. Perfect, Mr. Holt. Now then, to avoid any appearances of conspiracy, we go downstairs. My arm, Mr. Holt. And I am to do what, Inspector? Watch faces. 
Also watch persons approaching study door when shot is heard. Uh, how about a game of billiards, Dudley? Fine, John. Suits me. I think I will exercise on the piano. Ah, and here is Inspector Chen. We missed you at a dinner, Inspector. Yes, Inspector Chen. You missed a delightful dinner. Sometimes investigations of murder, a very prolonged series of eliminations. I am going to ask of you cooperation for a few minutes while we try experiment. French Surete has made use of reconstruction of crime most successfully. Uh, you mean, Chan, that you want us all to go through the motions of that particular night? Precisely, Mr. Ryder. I wish each one of you to take position you occupied at time shot was heard. What the, I thought you said that shot the, which we heard was not shot which killed Landini. Quite correct, Mr. Romano. However, for this particular purpose, it is the misleading shot which we wish to investigate. Uh, it's a lot of bunk, if you ask me. Your pardon, Mr. Ryder, but we did not ask you. Be so kind as to cooperate. Thank you so much. Since we don't know who fired that shot, Mr. Chang, how are you going to arrange that? Honorable Father of Sheriff will take care of that, while Sheriff and I watch the arrival of various persons at study door. Of course, Mr. Ward, there is no need for you. Mr. Beaton, those who were outside house to go any farther than downstairs hallway. Uh, Miss Beaton, will you guide Mr. Holt's study? Yes, Inspector. Take my arm, Mr. Holt. Thank you, Miss Beaton. Cecile, I particularly desire that you stand upon the same step on back stairs. You understand? Oh, but of course, monsieur. Exactly as it was that night. Correct, Cecile. Mrs. O'Farrell will be in the kitchen. You do not have to be afraid. There is nothing, nothing of which any innocent person should be afraid. I... I am not afraid, monsieur. Jan... Mr. Romano, you will go to your room. If the door was closed, be pleased to close it this time. Oh, but yes, of course, the door was closed. You wish me to go now? Yes, Mr. Romano, thank you. Uh, then you and I, Chan, we go to my room? Quite correct, Mr. Ryder. Ah Singh is already in back of house where he found blanket. Mr. Ward? Can I ask you to watch from bottom of stairs? Anything at all, Inspector, that I can do to help you. Yes. Now then, Mr. Ryder, I believe that only door to room in which you and I watch from window was open. Others will please close doors. Uh, do you really think you're going to gain anything this way, Chan? Most certainly, Mr. Ryder. I should not waste time in idle gestures. How long are we going to have to wait for the shot? Any moment, Mr. Ryder. Do not forget, please, that Mr. Holt is blind and may take care. Yeah. Now, we go to the study. One second, please. Time element, same as before. Now, go. Ah, there's Miss Beaton emerging from bedroom. Now we open the study door. Thank you, Mr. Holt. Well, Inspector, did you learn anything? Indeed, yes, Mr. Ward. Ah, here is Cecile. Tell me, Cecile, what was the difference between situation this time as compared with Nice's murder? Nothing, Monsieur Chen. Not one single thing. You were in the same position? Oh, yes, Monsieur Chen. Exactly as before. That would be all, Cecile. Thank you so much. Mr. Ryder, did you notice any difference? Uh, nothing except the lack of excited voices. Thank you, Mr. Ryder. You may go if you desire. Uh, come on, Dudley. Time for a game of billiards. If before Inspector that. Chan does not require me. Uh, not at all, Mr. Ward. Now then, Mr. Romano... Your reactions, please. My reactions? Uh, I think, uh, yes, uh, I am a certain same as a Mr. Ryder. I know the lack of excited voices, but before I go, I, I cannot be sure it was a shot I heard. A noise of a plane, you know. Uh, thank you, Mr. Romano. That would be all, please. Uh, Miss Beaton, you will remain with us, please. Certainly, Mr. Chairman. Be so good as to close study door, Mr. Sheriff. Thank you. Well, Inspector, did you learn anything? Yes, Sheriff. But first, I ask your honorable father, what do you think, Mr. Holt? But how can Dad know anything? Anything more than I know. He wasn't here. Nevertheless, he had opportunity to judge his voice. As he before remarked, his ears are his eyes. Well, in the first place, Ryder lied. Interesting. 
In what particular? When he said that he didn't notice anything but the lack of excited voices. So glad to find my own thought in agreement with you on that point. Doggone it, I don't get it at all. On um, one second, sir. Next point, Mr. Holt. Cecile spoke the truth, and Romano, I think he was searching his mind to make a comparison. If he did not tell the truth, it was not intentional. Thank you, Mr. Holt. Now, Miss Beaton, you arrive on scene of shot in much less time. Can you explain? Why, I... Uh, yes, I think I can explain. This time, the shot was so much louder that it startled me. And then, too, this time I knew what it was. Last time, I... I sat still a moment or two longer. I see. But you agree the shot was much louder? Very much so. Now, Sheriff, that was where Mr. Ryder lied. From where we stood, Mr. Ryder and I in Mr. Ryder's room, shot was so much louder as to be obvious. Yet, Mr. Ryder apparently did not notice. Did you see significance? I'm afraid I don't. It may have been because the cartridge was a blank. It shouldn't have been, son. I had a well bitten down to give her plenty steam. Observe, if you please, location in Mr. Romano's room. He does not note difference. The seal on back stairs, she does not note difference. Your humble servant in Ryder's room, I do note difference. Miss Beaton in room, once removed from study, she notes difference. I get it. Yes, sir, you're right. I get it. Well, I don't. Neither do I. All persons occupying rooms facing in same direction as balcony of study note difference. Person in other parts of house do not. Now I see. Now I've got it. You mean that the shot which you heard was fired from the balcony, but the shot which actually killed Landini wasn't fired on the balcony at all. It was in the room. She was killed probably beside the desk. Correct, Sheriff. I asked Mr. Holt to stand on balcony when he fired blank cartridge in belief that persons occupying same positions as before would note different. But still, Mr. Chan, what difference does it actually make where Landini was killed? That, Miss Beaton, is of little matter now. Important thing is, why did Mr. Ryder lie? Yes, indeed. Why did John Ryder lie? Was it because when the murder was committed, he did see something which he had denied? Or was he too close to the killer's pistol to be a judge of the volume of sound? After you have heard your sponsor's message, Inspector Chan will favor us with another of his philosophical Chinese sayings. Chan, I want you to know that our audience is very appreciative of these little good night thoughts. So happy to please, Mr. Wilson. Tonight, I have in mind the fact that on several occasions, Mr. Ryder, for no apparent reason, has not told truth. Sooner or later, he will be found out. Man who builds scaffold takes care that no weak timbers are used in construction of foundations. When man builds structure of story round lie, when lie is discovered, entire structure topples about his shoulders. Thank you, Mr. Chan. And good night.